Soldier, keep on marching on. All the teams are really, really on a similar level. We all want to win. We all want to get out of groups and make it even further. Head in the dust, feet in the fire. I think it's actually kind of rare that week two reflects how week one went. A lot of the times, if a team went like 0-3, they just, for some reason, like kick into overdrive. You got nowhere to run. He's right now, he got two already. Bang is hiding. He's coming. Bang looking to come in. Here comes your initiation. The race. Oh my God! Your shock wave will find them all. Soldier, keep on marching on. Head down to. 정말 만약에 세 경기를 다 져도 다른 팀들이 SKT는 충분히 무서워할 것 같아요. SKT Legends for a reason. 是很多年都没有全华班登陆上这个世界舞台了，然后能够在中国本土还是五个全华班，我是真的非常开心的。有没有五杀四个头？ Nếu mà đội của em qua khỏi vòng bảng thì bọn em sẽ chứng tỏ là thực lực của em nói riêng và thực lực của team nói chung và bọn em sẽ có thể làm tự hào và làm dạng danh được khu vực GPL nói chung và khu vực Việt Nam nói riêng. This could potentially be the first year that all NA teams make it out of groups. I think we're going to make it happen. This game is the story of Khan bringing it home. AHQ managed to find their win condition. Dives to his TA for the triple kill. The double lift has found the resets, and he says, here we go, TSM. It's a difference of inches, you know, losing one game and not making it out of groups. Welcome everyone to World 2017 in Wuhan, China. Over the next four days, our competitors will fight to secure their spot in the quarterfinals, starting today with the teams in Group B. Here you see the Gigabyte Marines in their ready room as they're gearing up to go against Immortals. Pobelter, Flame, and the rest of the crew making their way to the stage just a short time ago. Big, big matchups for all of our teams today as they make that final push for the knockout stage and challenge to continue their run towards the Summoner's Cup. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Dash Patterson, kicking off the week with Martin Deficio Lunga, Alberto Crumbs Rangifo, and Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley. Three hours earlier, I'm glad to see you all <laughs> set your alarms and made it here on time. How we doing? Well, Dash, esports never sleeps. Except for Crumbs the last few days, actually. Apparently, been sleeping <laughs> for like two days straight. Taking so, uh, full advantage of that. Not esports yet. <laughs> That's all right. You need your rest because we're about, we're in for four days of excitement here. Let's take a moment to highlight some of our international broadcast partners here at Worlds because we're not the only team broadcasting out. We've got the Chinese broadcast team bringing the Worlds groups to everyone around the world as long as our friends from the CB Lull. Time now to check out how the teams line up going into the week. In Group A, we see that the reigning champions, SKT, are undefeated after three games, with C9 leading the race for second place. In Group B, Immortals and Longzhu are pulling ahead, while the LPL's RNG are in control of Group C. Over in Group D, the stage is set for a tough fight with three teams tied before their final games on Saturday. 
And coming into this week, there are some players that we believe will be crucial for the fight, or rather for their team's fight for the quarterfinals. Here are our best of the rift, brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Here they are, Edward Gaming Scout, Immortals Poe Belter, Samsung Galaxy's Ruler, and Power of Evil from Misfits Gaming. First up, it's EDG's mid laner Scout, who's looking to turn things around for his team after they went 0-3 in Week 1. And we have uh, such a love-hate relationship with Scout in that mid lane, because in the early game, he's doing so well very often. The team is playing around him, they really want him to get ahead. But in the late game, he's making too many mistakes, so despite you know, a strong start, he can't finish, and that simply means EDG is sitting at 0-3. 0-3 week for them. They're going to have to turn it on here in week two if they have any shot of making it out of the group. Next, we have Immortals Poe Belter, a player that's been stepping up for the team in the mid lane so far. He's been very impressive to me, especially in his roaming on the Talia, on the rise, getting out to these side lanes, helping to snowball Flame on the carries, helping to snowball Cody Sun as well. And I love the consistency as well. It's not like one good game and then two bad ones. No, he's actually looked good in all three he's played so far. And it's very important you have a good mid lane in the meta here because it means you can then start snowballing side lanes and especially the bot lane if you need to. Now, Poe Belter is the one we'll get a look at today as Group B is up first this week. And while Poe Belter has been performing, one player that needs to deliver is Samsung Galaxy's bot lane carry in Ruler. For the majority of summer, Ruler has actually been on utility for Samsung, playing primarily Varus and Ash, but the meta has shifted to Arden Sensor carries. And it is shown in the damage share from AD. He's going from 27.8 prior to Worlds to 35.2. However, as a damage dealing AD carry, you need your team to shine for you. And that's just not happening for Samsung right now. So him underperforming is not just him, but a symptom of Samsung as a whole that they need to pick it up. All right, and finally, we have Misfits Gaming. One of the surprises here at Worlds, their star mid laner, Power of Evil, hoping to lead his team to the knockout stage in his first World Championship. Not just his, the entire team's first World Championship. They have had an impressive run, and they have made Group D quite interesting, sitting at 2-1. and one. Yeah, exactly. Surprising a lot of people with the 2-1 and one here, and I think one of the concerns with Misfits coming into this was the star power on the lineup, especially from the big carries. And Power of Evil actually playing really well at the moment, had no issues against Bjergsen and TSM, and the team is also looking good with the synergy between him and Max Law. Very much so. We'll see if these players can help their teams advance to the knockout stage from first blood till the Nexus explodes. You can follow the best of the Rift in more places than ever before. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Let's go ahead and take a look at today's schedule, where the teams in Group B step up on stage, starting with a monumental fight between second and third place Immortals and the Gigabyte Marines. From there, Fnatic begin their tough road to the knockout stage against Longzhu, followed by four more Group B clashes before we get our first quarter finalist at the end of the day. It is going to be a different format today as all of Group B playing today. Of course, the following groups in the days after. But after the six games, the reason we're starting earlier, we're going to have any tiebreakers immediately thereafter to decide who would get to those quarterfinals. Top two advance, bottom two, unfortunately, end their season here. We'll see how that works out throughout the rest of the day. Let's take a closer look at our competitors in Group B, starting with Longzhu, a team that has dominated so far in the group stage. Sure, the question for Longju is, are they really good or did they get an easy group? And to me, I think Longju is the best looking team so far at Worlds. Not only has their vision been superb, the way that they close out games quickly has been exceptional. The meta, and when you look historically at teams that have dominated their groups, that relatively easy groups, you have Samsung, White, SKT, and even Samsung last year, all these teams that make a very deep run at Worlds. And so for Longju, I think they're in the works of making a deep run at this time and, hey, maybe even take the whole thing. It's just, it's scary that they have, like, super good players in every single position, and then they also, like, can react quickly to weird decisions, like with the Mordekaiser play from Gigabyte Marines. You know, we had Immortals going for Drake when Baron was alive in a 4v5, and Immortals are, like, instantly just reacting and punishing it. And... When you have the star power and you have that kind of shot calling, then you can win worlds. Quick to adapt to some of the curveballs thrown their way. And while Longzhu have looked like the best team, we've got to talk about Immortals, who have a good chance of making it out of the group. They were the one team that played Longzhu the closest of, <laughs> of them all. Yeah, and I mean, it still was a one-sided game. It still was a quickly shutout game. But the early game for Immortals was very promising. And you have to think, if Immortals can clean up some of their late game mistakes, some of their issues, you know, getting caught out here and there, they might be able to make a game of it against Longzhu and, and challenge, perhaps. All right, well, Poe Belter, Flame, two of those guys are going to have mm -hmm. to step up for Immortals if they're looking to get work done today. Team that we are looking at going into the group stage is the Gigabyte Marines. They had a surprise performance at MSI. The question is, 
what have they shown us here so far at this World Championship? Exactly. They have had a couple of days to cook something up, see if they can bring something new to the table, but that's just not going to cut it anymore. Is a random strategy enough for them to take enough games to make it into the quarterfinals? I think not, but a good sign for them is that the last game against Immortals, they showed that they could play a little bit more standard, and if they can refine that play with enough mechanical skill, I think they can actually be good enough to get out. And I just want to see Levi back on a carry jungler, like this Choga thing they were doing with the lane swap. It, it, it wasn't good enough to, to win a game. I, I really want to see, you know, this guy who is so active in the early game when it comes to farm, ganks, everything. He's like the highest jungle proximity. So he spends almost half his time with his laners making plays happen, get him on a carry. And I think even in a standard setup, they can actually win games. And then, of course, finally, we have the struggling Fnatic. They went 0-3 in week one, still looking to strike back after a couple of days of rest. And it's going to be a tough road for them if they're going to make it out of this group. They have to essentially run the table. They have to be able to take down Longju. And you're hoping that other teams lose other games. There's I mean, a two and four tiebreaker. Yeah, try and go for it. If Game, Come Ray, on. if Game Ray Reads does beat Immortals, yeah. the group gets blown wide open. All right, game one is going to make this entire day very, very interesting. Don't forget to keep sending us your world's big plays at LOL Esports using that hashtag Worlds2017. We'll highlight them throughout the tournament. Now, enough from us here as we head over to Freak, Papa Smithy, and Jat Ole share some thoughts on NA as a region. I think this year, like many great players came to NA. Like someday, Arrow, Ryu, like I can say lots of good players. And I think this make this made like NA stronger. And I think this year is kind of a chance to prove NA is really strong region. And we'll see if Northburg can be good this year at Worlds. Hello, everyone. My name is David Freak Turley, joined here by Chris Papa Smithy Smith and Joshua Jat Leesman. We even got some flowers here for us as well, so it's a quadra cast. Yeah, I can't wait to cast today. We know so much is on the line very early on in this group. And I think Ole had it right. You know, if you have NA representation, just throw in some Korean representation, makes it better. That's why we got you here. Balance out all of our NA biases. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineup. We're going to start with the Blue Side team, which is going to be the Immortals from the North American LCS. Flame in the top lane, Smithy in the jungle, Pobelter in mid. Cody Sun and Botlin alongside their support Ole with their coach Song. Yeah, and their opponents on the red side is going to be the champions of the GPL, the Gigabyte Marines. This game, we have Archie in the top lane, Levi in the jungle, Optimus in mid, Noe in bot lane, and bringing in a player we didn't see last week, Sia at support. And I think that's something that has to be talked about. Nevin was kind of lost in the shuffle of all the antics, you could say, of Gigabyte Marines, especially early in the week. He was the Heal Ignite Lulu player. Yep. He originally was a top laner. Maybe that's where he got his inspiration for the Heal Ignite. But he was someone who was trying something different. Kind of a weird history lesson where you think, OK, just a couple of days ago, they played against this team. They played standard. Now they changed their support. Standard didn't yeah. work last time. What now? Also, it is a support that is more experienced in the laning phase. Because you remember when they did play standard lanes, they got smashed in that laning yep. phase. And Gigabyte Marines can tie Immortals in the standings with the win. We can't yeah. forget that because looking at this, everyone's talking about how Immortals has it made. They just have to beat the Marines to get out of the group. But at the same time, the Gigabyte Marines just have to beat Immortals and Fnatic again. And they're probably out of the group too so this right. is a very big game for both teams yeah the likely result here for marines if they win is a tiebreaker at the end of the day that battle of second place the likely result for immortals if they win is they are at least three and three they own the head-to-head -head and it's very likely they make top eight and then to be the first north american team to make top eight at worlds 2017 more could follow and yeah. immortals want to pull forward right that's the thing i've taken away here is that i loved reviewing immortals games as i was preparing for worlds because their early game plans they follow a very smart structure i can see that song has well drilled his team because they always really have an identity to what they want to do in the early parts of the game. Now, sometimes the late game get away from them, famously, of course, in that grand final of the NALCS. But they're the sort of team that's active in the early game. And maybe that's why we saw the Gigabyte Marines show a bit of respect and think, OK, this is a well-drilled team. Maybe if we try something, it'll go just like it did against Longju. Yeah, and if I'm looking at the Gigabyte Marines, I don't actually think they should lane swap, but I do want to see more of the types of plays they made at the midseason Invitational, where they are diving one wave before you expect. They're roaming their mid laner down at level four instead yep. of level six and making you react that way rather than it being something you can drill like how to play a lane swap. Yeah, and the question is, you know, do they, do they risk that Immortals knows how to play against a lane swap or not? Or again, do they just play the simple sort of hyper-aggressive gameplay that got them so many fans when they played at MSI earlier this year? And we also have to mention the last time these teams played, Immortals threw out a Scion ban, which was the first we'd seen of it. Who knows if that was something Gigabyte Marines wanted to play. And also, in connection with that, Jack, that was on red side. We're swapping over blue and red side. Gigabyte Marines are now on red side to counterpick 
uh, for top lane, or maybe even just an inventive jungle pick is yep. what we see now that they have the benefit of that red side. And the Scion was clearly not a one-time thing. Yeah, Immortals clearly thinking they really want this one, whether they heard something or what, but uh, they don't want to let Gigamite Marines get that champion. We'll see if, if red side is the antic side, though, for the red squad here, and if they do something else here. Kalista, Zaya so far off the tables, a lot of bot laners gone. Cody Sun's still getting something he wants, though, almost for certain. Yeah, I think the Galio ban is what should be a must ban a bit against Gigabyte Marines. They got it in that Fnatic game, and it was one of the key things about having a very low experienced top laner who's still able to wait. And apart from the excitement of it just being Gigabyte Marines, it's also the first game of week two. It's the first game to show us what adaptation, what VOD review, what teams have learned, yep. and what the kind of the scrim meta was over the past couple of days. Because this is usually where the tournament pivots, the famous storyline, mm -hmm. Korean teams adaptations in week two. There's a lot of other great teams here. They're going to have new stuff to show us. Absolutely. And I'm very intrigued to see what that ends up being. So far, pretty much up to chalk. The band's pretty standard, though. These teams wouldn't scream each other. You wouldn't know what the new team has practiced, of course. But Gragas, early on in the draft, is not a surprise to almost anyone here. Yeah, in fact, Gragas was the only duplicate champion Immortals had last week. This is now the third pick they have on it for x -Men. And it feels like Gragas has really risen in pro priority so far here at Worlds. It felt like other people were counting. Other junglers were really respecting him a bit less. Sure, the other big junglers are banned away, but I feel like Gragas is cementing himself as really the top tier. It's also, Lulu for Gigabyte Marines is cemented as a pick, even though it's Sia in this time. Sure, of course, different player. Lulu still three of their four games. That's been the support pick. Of course, that could flex. They are the crazy one. We've seen Lulu jungle be played competitively. We've seen Lulu top be played competitively. I like to leave it open because you can't count them out anything they do. But what is interesting is the earlier Syndra pick. That's a bit atypical to get it here. You almost always see both bot leaders grabbed first phase of the red side. Yeah, it is something that Poe Belter was able to play quite well last week. So I think they're respectful of that, so to speak, with that. And any type of strategy that Marines wants to play, I feel like needs to have a strong advantage somewhere that they can play yes. around. They see Syndra with nice. Galio off the table. Hey, maybe they can create a lot of mid lane and jungle pressure with these two early pushing picks. And it is a high prize for the Syndra because they actually haven't locked in AD carry in the first round. They are leaving it. Some bands may go towards the roll. Maybe that will be the pick that will show a bit more innovation compared to what they focused on so far. It was a later pick Kane the last time we saw it from Gigabyte Marines. And actually the first time I had the, had the privilege to cast a Kane game. Yeah, and Gigabyte Marines also didn't always play a marksman in the bot lane back sure. at the midseason Invitational. They had a different player down there. No way they have a lot more faith in his ability to carry in this meta with Lulu as support. But I wouldn't be too surprised if they pull out the I six. looked in his champion pool when it came to what was playing Korean solo queue. There was definitely some six there, so don't <laughs> count it out. Well, if they have enough physical damage, Kane could be enough for that one. Of course, you still need to balance your team compositions out. Keep in mind, this guy had done very well on Kane despite it being a loss last week. Plus 31 CSD at 15. He had smashed the jungle using Trist and uh, Twitch off the table. Typical physical damage marksman, but again, if that Ziggs is in there, it's, it's available. Yeah, and do they wait until the last pick to surprise here? They, they may well, because they could still get value out of a counter pick, but you never know with Gigabyte Marines if they have a strategy around an odd bot lane. And we were smiling around the Ziggs Just earlier, and maybe it won't be <laughs> Ziggs in the end. I actually it wouldn't is. have been the worst choice against Janna, so yeah. when it comes to later games, perhaps we'll see it, but it's going to be the much more standard Ash in this game. And honestly, like Ash isn't even that standard of a pick anymore, right? The, the, the strategy that everyone is picking, that everyone thinks is the best composition, is these Trists, the Swistanas, the the, the Kog'Maz, the Zyze, right? These hyper carries, the, the multi-target long range, high burst, and Ash is almost an afterthought in this sort of phase of League of Legends right now. You, you rarely see the utility marksman. Yeah, and looking over at what Immortals is doing, they're building a defensive fortress for whatever Gigabyte Marines is going to throw at them. A lot of Marine strategies around going fast, enabling other picks, and trying to attack a point of weakness. With Shen and John Gragas, the disengaged shielding is immense. And that is certainly a read on Immortals comp, but it's also reactionary potentially to a fault. This is the sort of comp where when it comes to priority, we're not going anywhere. And oh, uh, that is baby. our first Ergot here. And when it comes to losing lanes here, Jack, <laughs> there might actually be a worry here for the Immortals. Well, you can ban one <laughs> undead monstrosity from Noxus, but you've got another one coming in here with Urgot for Archie in the top lane. I am so excited. The question is, 
uh, will Archie be able to pull this stuff off? Because he is the guy now that has been put on the Mordekaiser and been put on the Urgot. And when you talk about Archie, he's not this mechanical god who's going to smash lanes, but that's what is needed to succeed with Urgot. You have to slam ahead of the Shen if you want split push priority in the mid or late game. And we're already assuming that it won't be a 1v2 Urgot. He is very strong in the 1v1, so I see that. But I also think back to IEMs way back when with blue buff Urgots doing crazy things. Mm -hmm. We're never sure with the Gigabyte Marines. This is another one or two of in his solo queue account. But when it comes to this man, Archie's willing to try anything. And I love and respect teams willing to do this. You get enough games to understand the important points of it and say, okay, we understand the inflection points, the matchups, the way the team comp runs. We know you don't know it. There is no way Immortals has scrimmed against Urgot top with his composition. That's got to be impossible. So I want to see then what kind of expertise we're going to see come out of Gigabyte Marines because they are the biggest innovators at Worlds this year, bringing out another one. And when it comes to the notes, we said Song is so great at preparation. This is definitely diving into the supplementary notes. This is really going to the extra innings because you have to say, like Freak, they're going to be thrown off at least a little bit. Got to see awesome. what the innovation is going to be. It's going to be so much fun. Gigabyte Marines and Immortals. The battle for the second seed, most likely out of the group. See which team can do it here. Two and one record versus one and two. Record for these two squads. We get ourselves ready to go onto the Rift for the first game of the day as we're going to figure out which will be the two representatives from Group B at the end of it all. Yeah, and when you're thinking about the Gigabyte Marines in this team composition, you're going to have a lot of questions about how are they going to play the early game? Are they going to be doing any crazy jungle patterns? Or are the weird champion picks enough? No one else is playing Kane at this level. No one else is playing Urgot at this level. There's already a lot different than Immortals has to account for. But Immortals read so far is they feel like they don't have to do a crib notes from what Longju did when they were on the blue side against potential innovation from Gigabyte Marines. There we saw the aggressive two wards placed on the blue side of Gigabyte Marines, right very deep to spot any lane swaps. Because they see the cane, they're expecting power farm. They're not expecting anything other than standard lanes. They go for a five point defense, which Fnatic did as well. On that day, Fnatic was punished. On this day, it should be fine for the side of Immortals. We'll see what comes out of this one. River Wards, and it's gonna be, and they know Xpithy is likely to start at his blue buff. He's staying in vision. I didn't see if he saw the ward go down, but he's now cheating away. and. It's yeah. like he can make it to Raptors in time if he wants to. Maybe he was hoping to give misinformation. And he will be, of course, getting the leash from his bot side. Wait yeah. to see what Archie wants to do alongside Levi. Last time these teams played, Immortals tried a late invade from the red side, which resulted in Olay trying to make an initiation on Rakan, giving up first blood and also burning multiple flashes. This time, it's the Gigabyte Marines making late invade to try to disrupt this Raptor start. Let's see if they can steal away. If they get rid of two, they get the level disappointed. And actually looks like two uh, CS for Zia means uh, it will not be uh, an easy level for Xmithy here, losing two of those small Raptors. Yeah, he has two Biscuits on the side of Cinder to just refillable potion on Pobelter, so not a huge sustained difference with the harass they took. It will slow down Xmithy, but I don't think by that much. The big thing, though, is the difference that this creates between Levi and Xmithy. Kane is a unique jungler in the fact that he can start Raptors and clear them extremely fast, even without a pull. So Gigabyte Marines using that to their advantage. But then you just listen to what you're saying, Jack. You say, okay, a little bit of an advantage to Levi. We already said. Shen versus Urgot, big advantage Urgot in the lane. Syndra should have the tempo over Rise in the mid lane and the bot lane. Even if you look at the items, it's Relic Shield and Refillable against Doran's Shield and the more active start yep. of going for the potion. So three losing lanes, Xmithy. Yep. Okay, a half step on the back foot, but still on the back foot. This is the sort of games where if Gigabyte Marines purport to play standard, which largely they have here, they should be able to get a sizable advantage in the early game. But they did a different look on the, the scaling of it, right? The, the, the meta game that everyone's playing is get the better late game, get the hyper carry, and Marines said, no, we're going to draft for advent advantageous matchups in all four roles, all four lanes, essentially. If you count the jungle as one of them, Levi going to jump over and take away Crux. He's got him, but the rest of these camps are gone. But he does take away Krugs and he steals some farm. Yeah, well, this is actually very much a route pattern that you see someone do from the blue side of the map. So often you get the Raptor start, which then often ends with the counter jungle of the enemy Krugs at the end of it. But Levi has flipped that around and done that strategy from the red side because that's what Kane could do. Ole spotted them, but the camp is gone. And it was important for him to go there, though. There was no early vision down. He'll jump over and pop over does Levi. But that was the only information they had about Levi's route, just from the eyes on by Ole. The thing I want to point out, actually, is, uh, again, talking about the ways the Gigabyte Marines versus the way Immortals plays. Arkham Sensor, no surprise, has been 
the item of the tournament. Everyone's rushing it. Every single team has bought Ardent Sensor. Marines are the slowest team to buy this item of all the squads that rode so far in the group stage. Now that some of that could have been their other support pick, their other player, but now we see it and maybe it's going to be more different. That said, they are right now smashing bot lane in farm via playing a more aggressive duo. Yeah, and speaking of aggression, Archie's trying to get very touchy up top lane. There's the top. Bonnie Thumb's going to land for sure. There's no way out anymore. The slow is on. He pops bridge. He goes for the leap. And Mike is going to wait for us to come and flash oh. out. And you got to be kidding me. Archie's not going to die. Immortals don't get the damage in, and Archie survives the encounter. Now Levi to 1v2 doesn't want to chase any farther, but that's two flashes down for one in a survival. Exactly. Still has teleport, will be able to shop and go buy items. That's a huge laning phase win here early for the Marines. And even bigger than it might appear at first, because Smithy and Flame both flashed, didn't yep. pick up the kill. Urgot flashless against a Shen with flash would have to play so respectful on lane. He wants to overextend to get those big EQ trades. Now he's going to have to play uh, just sideways, he can continue to play aggressively because he knows that a lot of the playmaking tools are down. And Asuka's getting a lot of damage in a Cobalt. So here, of course, Summoner heal is up, means no reason to die, but it is a forced recall out with a 10 oh. CS lead. Levi might go for him, he does have Flash. Here he comes, Gragas is around, though Smithy in the fog lands, the body oh. snap, no turret, no, there is turret, Dagger takes one shot, gonna jump to the wall, but there's the damage output, and they're gonna get first blood coming through the rune prison in time, Pull Belter, 400 gold richer. And a very big mistake by Levi there, evaporating the pressure that Optimus had created in that mid lane. Sure, they get the summer spells off and they'll need to return gank, but that was a very large lead Optimus was building that he could invade with Levi for. And that's mostly gone now. Even mechanically, it wasn't clean. The first turret shot he took when he was peeking out, investigating whether he could dive, was more than he could hope to bear. Did not choose to disengage. Gives away a kill in the mid lane. We're going to see the replay. You watch here. He's not taking turret aggro now, takes the first shot, and Smithy being there yeah. is the big factor. Spot exactly. Back, yeah. He could have gone for Pobelter and at least looked to bait out summoners, but he has no deep vision with which to understand where X Smithy would be. Even though X Smithy had burned Flash in the top lane, it didn't matter. X Smithy was still on the rift. He still hasn't shot. He's running around the map with uh, enough farm to be okay. Nice little trade on a Cody Sun going down to 400 HP is. The Marine bot lane still up 10 farm and seeming to punish the more aggressive choices. Archie now on a 1v1 and Smithy now making it two. Running into the turtle, stay alive. I think we should also talk about another member of the Immortals. We had a little uh, verbiage towards Pobelta earlier. Flame is someone who has come to this tournament with decent expectations, good season, largely playing a pretty small champion pool over in the NALCS. If you remember, when he was on just getting through lane duty on the Maokai, actually did very competitive against the Jovin coming through in that game from Khan. In this game also, he's actually ahead in CS mm -hmm. in a very difficult matchup against the Urgot. His ability to sustain difficult matchups is actually a compliment to Flame. Exactly, because during the regular season, he was a Jarvan Renekton player for the vast majority of his games. So far here, it has been Jace, Maokai, and now the second Shen. And he's up against a pick that no one really plays in professional play. One game from the new Urgot in the LCL, which is the CIS region, in a loss. That's all that has happened since the Urgot rework. So you're not even really prepared for these situations. You still have to adapt. And just so you guys are clear, this is the spot you want to play Urgot into against a melee tank matchup that you can basically crush unless you have a big disadvantage in terms of jungle pressure or if your flash is down, for example. So this is set up to succeed for Archie. So anything less than a pretty decent CS lead it's not going to be useful outside of in the 1v1 because Urgot mm -hmm. still not a fantastic team fighter. Now, speaking of CS, you can still look at that scoreboard on the bottom. Mid lane and bot lane still looking very good for Marines. I do want to point out that Levi's farm lead is a bit misleading. He's gotten a lot of the smaller camps with multiple members on it. So uh, the plus 14 is actually uh, only barely up in gold compared to what exactly. the first one would have given x in the first place. So he's not smashing as much as the scoreboard would indicate. The rest of the lanes, though, very good in mid and bot. Yeah, only up 50 gold in that spot. But it is very much Levi's style to heavily prioritize the Raptor camp and the Krug camp because the number of monsters in the jungle is what determines how often you can get that catch-up experience because over in the GPL, he absolutely obliterates people and then he denies them the catch-up experience by getting those camps. This game, there's none to be had because the average level of the jungle camps is not above the average level of the jungle camps. The fight into the jungle, though, the two of them coming in through. Here comes the Shen to re-engage the 2 on 2 about to join junglers and top laners. A ton is across, and can they knock down Ark? He's going to try to get the damage across the ulti, but they kill him in time. So the trade kill comes through for Levi. That was nearly a fear beyond death kill across. And the mid laners in as well as Aquas now running for his life. He's a bit low, 400 HP. Smithy still on the chase. Levi putting in the damage as well, has the mana pool to keep going. Smithy in the one on one still going against Optimus as well. Who's going to get it? The flash chase in the knockback is there. The barrel. Not going to get the kill. It's a two for one trade advantage. Goodbye, Marie.
three. The decision there for Smithy was to go for the kill, left his mid laner completely in the lurch, died with heal up, knew he would not get out. The consistent DPS of these melee assassins like the Kane will just take you down. And oh, they gotta go for the kill. Summon a heal for movement speed, flash for the knockup. The Zephyr auto attack. No! And he's going for the play. They're gonna get the kill. Ole sets him up and Smithy knocks him down. The fact that they burned so much to then what looked like nearly miss it when the barrel landed was amazing sidestepping by Optimus. And that entire fight uh, was pretty much just Levi and Optimus saying they can take him, right? Immortals goes for the initial play with the stand united, but when the initial burst of the three-on-three -three ends with both top laners dying, it just turns into jungle versus mid laner duels on both sides. And consider what Pavelta actually is able to do this fight. A bit of damage onto Optimus, but he cannot walk past Levi. He is only ever going to lose even with blue buff in these early levels. Not enough base damage on the spells. So eventually he's going to be out-traded by Pavelta as it's Smithy has only eyes for Optimus, but it required much more to actually pick up the kill after the highlight clip went over. Yeah, and this early game, very competitive between the Marines and Immortals. There has been a lot shifted in the general game flow thanks to the jungle pass of Levi, but where we should draw our attention is actually the bottom lane where No Way and Sia are doing quite well in that matchup. But the issue with competitive is that Gigabyte Marines did not pick for competitive. They picked a smash early game, and they're not doing that. It's 200 gold lead to Gigabyte Marines after the last trade-up they did on the fighting. So with the picks they have, with the game plan they have, Immortals are are more than happy to come in. Basically competitive with a team with Urgot who is really built sure. for the early game. Yeah, they're playing the meta game composition. They're playing the standard stuff. Gold only 300 apart. And you have to imagine the late game scaling is better unless there's something we don't know about Urgot. You don't imagine he's going to smash the late game, although maybe it's possible. It's just kind of hard to say. Yeah, and as we can see, Paul Belter has been getting camped by many other mid laners and hadn't died before oh. 15 until this game. Good plans. Colin Captain for that one. Nice knock up there in Levi. Not going to find much more. Out they go. Appreciate the little shout out there. Yeah, Freak, of course. It was, uh, I love me some 80 carries. Captain Jack, a true legend in my mind. I would go so far as to say the best player to never make one. He had a very impressive career. Couldn't get fair. there. We'll cut off the Captain Jack shout out. It is the first turret of the game for Gigabyte Marine. And that's the payoff, though. Farm lead 17, not huge. 200 gold individually, not huge. That turret is what the payoff is for. Again, you say picking the metagame composition with the scaling versus the Marines going for early pressure in every single lane. That's the payoff. First turret into an 1130 Infernal Drake. This is the start of what this comp wants to do. Yeah, straight up winning. We're wondering if Immortals' compositions would be reactive to a fault. That bottom lane with the Relic Shield start is not going to win against Ash Lulu. Ash had not been played in the group stage up until now. Is an extremely strong early laner. And now Levi's looking for Pobelter again. Nice stun. The damage up. going to be the slow as in. There's almost no way out for Pobelter. The ulti's not going to be in range for Levi. Flashes to get in, but the damage going to be low. Still gets it anyway. Blue smite. It's personal on that one. Levi takes him down. And that's the bonus. That's the cherry on the top of the bot lane turret into the Infernal. Getting the kill mid lane as well. Pobelter complimented in stats. Complimented earlier in this cast for absorbing pressure. Him going down there is definitely an oopsie. And he got counterpick. Keep in mind, the Cinder was blinded first round red side, and Pobelter said, okay, rises by matchup, let's go for that one. And right now, Optimus and Levi are punishing for it. This Immortals draft is very similar to what a lot of Korean teams and a lot of teams in general at this tournament have been playing. Outscale, we'll get there. Twitch Jana, one of the prized bot lanes. This is what teams have been picking. But when you go all out in the early game, your thought, and in definitely an, if, in earlier metas, it would have been easier. In this meta, it's harder to close out. It's on the Gigabyte Marines to keep up this pace. Also notable, always difficult to choose your summoner spells against Syndra. Goes for the heal rather than the cleanse. It gives time for Levi to chain off of the CC from Optimus and then chase through for the extra damage that the heal cannot absorb. And kind of unlucky by Polter as well. He didn't know if he should expect Flash to Levi or not. He flashed late when the ulti was already cast, so Umbral Trespass came through. And that's, that's a bit rough to lose your Flash when he's already caught you, but... That's the breaks. Exactly. For as much as we praised Pobelter for being able to absorb pressure in the first three games of group stage, deathless in the first 15 minutes, despite having all that jungle pressure against him, two deaths now in the first 13 minutes, and a massive CS differential in the favor of Optimus. A lot of that is the matchup, but a lot of that is Levi as well.
And now Immortals are more in the hole you would have expected given the draft. They are now behind a sizable goalie. 2,000 at 13 minutes, nothing to turn your nose up to. But again, we've learned meaningful. average game time can be long at this sure. world. This is the sort of game where in the late game, you look at Immortals and you think the game can only go one way. So now it's really back to the loss minimization time for Immortals because they are largely react. Also, the last time we saw Levi play Kane, he did Black Cleaver second into Red Kane. This build is telling me he might be going for oh. the blue one. Ooh, That's big played, words yeah. there. Oh. Building up forward as long as he attacks range. Champions kill pull through a lot. Here's a bit of more burst damage out of the rise, but a shield gets him away. He's going to stay up there. Smithy going to keep the lane up. This definitely does look like it's going to be more Assassin Kane. We'll see if he can get through the Janna. He got so many hits on a Pope Belter with the two kills. It's a high probability, I feel like. Remember, the point. transform was very slow also in that game against Immortals, so we'll keep track of that. I think he's... Never mind. He's getting there. I think he's sure. actually already blue Kane. Oh, but we can't tell on the spectator. I think the side one isn't. Yeah, because all icons are all blue now. I think he's already blue cane here in this one. Here we go. Very much. Here comes a fight on the top lane. Arrow going to miss. Goes a bit more chase into that. And you can see if he ever moves while casting W, it's definitely blue cane. He already, he already did transform. Yeah. So our mistake with that reference. Well, there you go. Correct. I predicted it. <laughs> <laughs> nice prediction, Chad. <laughs> and that's another turret I going down. I think will be picked this game. <laughs> but... <laughs> Beautiful stuff, but again, the payout continues. The Gigabyte Marines, you can see mid turrets already low, top one already fell. It's not in always the CS numbers, in the farm numbers, but the turret pressure, the early game still going their way. And I think a lot of analysts were hoping and praying that comps that play the early game could get there. They could see yeah. the return of the Alistair, the Gigabyte Marines try. But here comes the action. A big slow on a two of them, good long range as well. Out they go, and the Rift will not even really get back the damage that was dealt during the laning phase by Optimus in mid lane. The game being solved as only playing defensive is one read on the first week. Gigabyte Marines trying to have a different read. Longju yep. speed running their way through worlds. We're hoping that proactivity can still win in the risk reward trade. Gigabyte Marines certainly took a lot of risks. You can see the Aragot and know they've done that. But at least this time, it's actually paying off against Immortals, who so far have been just too reactive and a half step behind. Yep. And it's a lead grown by Gigabyte Marines. Absolutely is. Right now, the number is only 2,500. It is large, but not insurmountable. Want to point out some things that have been chosen right here. Cody Sun actually going for a Wits End early. It is a faster power spike item. It's 1,000 gold cheaper yep. than a Rage Blade. It allows him to amp up the magic damage of Pobos because the item has a magic damage shred. So people to bot lane on line a little bit earlier, if not optimal late game scaling, so trying to combat that a little bit. Also want to point out, there's no tank for Marines right now. It's it's an Urgot building a cleaver as the heaviest front line. That team fight's going to be hard. Yeah, and also no way going Blade of the Ruin King, so I feel like that also counters the Wit's End power spike in a small way instead of some of the slower Infinity Edge builds we've seen. So these guys are very much online now when they're meeting, and I think Immortals needs to make sure that they don't get snowballed on because that's yeah. Gigabyte Marine's game. If this game goes 40 minutes and the gold difference is still 3,000, we feel like Immortals just brutes up his five and wins the team fight. Yeah. So my read on how Gigabyte Marines will want to play this game, because it's the sort of thing we have to spitball a little bit. The parts here have certainly not been put together in the LCK, certainly, but even at Worlds. Playing around the 1v1 power of specifically this man on your screen, Archie, on the Urgot, a dueling champion, and having Kane invade and also put down control wards on his side of the jungle, I think winning 2v2s against a fed Kane and Urgot sounds terrifying. So playing around his pressure, which has been difficult. We remember Cube being completely shut out of that game against 1907 Fenerbahce on the last match day of week one. Playing around a very oppressive 1v1 top laner, to me, is my read on how Gigabyte Marines could grow this lane. We'll see if they can do it right now. The armor shred going to help with the assassins on the team as well. Levi waiting in the jungle right now. Yeah, and I also see, uh, when thinking about the metagame or what Gigabyte Marines is doing, the champions can change, but the core strategies throughout time in League of Legends do stay mostly the same. And this is the most similar to actually the Spring Split meta, where you had the Ash, Varus, Jin, AD carries with heavy damage dealers in the jungle and potentially split push tops. That's what they're going to be trying to do, which is initiation with the Ash arrow around the jungler trying to carry the back end of team fights and assassinating carries. You're going to see the uh, arrow, of course, at miss, but Walter not with a lot of vision in the jungle. I'm not sure if he even saw it, but thankfully he was not in the right spot to get hit. That could have been the dive from Optimus. Now mid lane pressure in for Immortals, three men strong, and with the power of dogs, that will indeed fall. I don't believe he got local goal, but here comes Levi on the backside. Yeah. He wants to flank, but with Ash Arrow down, it's very difficult to lock someone from Immortals. 
And also now, with mid turret down first, it gets harder for Gigabyte Marines to use, say, top lane pressure with Urgot and parlay it into a Baron. Getting Baron control when you don't have mid priority, the ability to push through mid, have the minions sent down, get easier access to deep wards is not a trivial thing. They'll probably get there eventually. The turret is low, but it is another thing to slow down Gigabyte Marines. Another fight now in the jungle. Looks like Avotas want to go back into this one and see if they can get themselves the kill. Apple Trespass is going to get away. Flash over the wall. He's alive for now. Here comes the Rise Ultimate to join in, though. Nice two-man slow, and Levi gonna get out. Trades away with the ultimate. So slippery, and that type of reaction from Immortals now actually gets rid of a lot of their proactivity. No Realm Warp, no Shen Ultimate. It's very difficult now for Immortals to make a play. And Archie gets free time in the top lane. You're looking at Sia and Noe walk up as well. The Whimsy to get them there faster. And that play costs them most of, if not the entire top lane, to two turret. Gigabyte Marines are not interested in matching. They are looking to innovate. They are looking to be proactive. Not quite the turret down yet. A lot of people coming up. Cavalry here for Immortals. I like what they've done to try to push through mid. But that's really the only thing you can smile about on the side of the Immortals when it comes to the first 20 minutes. We're kind of just watching all the tempo be created by the Gigabyte Marines. We've seen the shop come through. Gonna keep pushing out. Levi looking strong as well. Two items. Pretty sick. Yeah. Almost doubling the farm of X Mythy right now. Individual gold wise. He's up a solid thousand and one hundred. So you're seeing that jungle matchup look very good. Levi has been a huge point of power for Gigabyte Marines. His early games continue to be very good. And there's a reason he gets so much of the praise on this squad. He's continuing it here on the world stage against one of North America's best. X Mythy was the best jungler by pretty much all accounts in North America. And Levi has been outplaying him largely in this game. Yeah, at least in his ability to farm. If it wasn't for the counter gank in the mid lane of X Smithy, this could also be a much larger lead for Levi. So sometimes that aggression from Levi has turned against him. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle for Marines throughout this game because it's the battle to keep the map spread out and only group on their schedule. Because one reason the Jana has been rising in popularity here at the World Group Stage is how strong she is in team fights. Yep. It feels like with Art and Sensor in these team fights, the engage always gets stuffed, and then everyone gets supplied with the buff. Not to mention, Gigabyte Marines don't have your traditional team fighting compositions. So these, these are the fights they want. Ooh, Smithy forced to jump away as well, and heal burn by Pobelter. So two more summoners down from Immortals. Gigabyte Marines able to get those little schedules going and, and find advantages. But what the Marines need to do is find a way to finish off the very low health turret in mid lane. Makes these soda plays so much more reliable. Usually deep vision, and Levi poking around the back might actually get Cody Sun and LA to move out. Notice that. Uh, Cody Sun with his cheaper build has two items already. Has Hurricane. Very hard to push him through. They're going for Pope Elder. They're going to find the slow. He's got the Realm Warp, but no Zonia's no flash. The stun's oh. going to land anyway. The kill goes to Levi. He's on a rampage. Four straight kills for him. After the first blood, 3,000 gold lead, and now pressure continues onto this one. Maybe they going to join the top lane to try to push out Archie if he can get away with this. Flame getting a bit low. The flash, the taunt going to be there as well. They might have the burst damage. The fear beyond death not quite going to come through. No, it is. He's going to eat him. Oh. But he's going to get the kill. He's going to get the terror. Oh. The duo lane comes back in. Hola gets the kill credit, unluckily for them. But no, look at the bot so lane. so much, they never responded to the Marines push bottom. Come Cougar on, Donna down. just walked there slowly. Levi, that's going to power this down. That inhibitor almost definitely going to fall. Immortals have lost two with Poe Ultra dying earlier. Smithy cannot stop this easily. Levi, get away. Oh. Make it happen? No, they don't quite have the time for it. Now Optimus got to be in danger. He's taking the auto no attack. Flash. No flash on Optimus. He does have a Lulu, though. Here's the Lulu and the knockup, and they're all going to be OK. But that was close. Inhibitor stays alive. And you might think that not taking down the inhibitor is the critical factor, but in all of this, they do get mid lane outer. They get more control over the map. Immortals now only have the dregs of map pressure. Gigabyte Marines, they've got everything. And what's so surprising to me about the way these plays are happening is the lack of vision control that Immortals has had for Marines to make those plays. Like when Pobelter starts that fight at the bottom lane, they had no vision within their jungle to see the path from Levi or Optimus before they died. And then they sent far too many people up to the top side. They only needed two to secure that kill, so to speak. Uh, still even backs backfires on them because Flame underestimated the damage from Archie's Urban. Definitely did underestimate. I want to point out, actually, we talk about adaptation knowing the matchup. Bramble Vest, I think, is a must-buy item if you're a tank playing against Urgot. When he hits Purge, the W, he attacks three times a second and does one-third damage, but takes full damage from on hit effects like Bramble Vest, it hard wins the matchup. He didn't buy it here. We're gonna get the replay. My big takeaway was Optimus on point with the interrupt onto 
the Realm Warp and then easily killed from there. I think the decision is what we talk about. Honestly, the minimap to me is the most interesting thing. It's two people onto Urgot, but Janna and Cogmore coming along as a duo. Yeah, if I had to guess, Immortals was thinking about getting this kill and trying to turn immediately for Baron uh, for an inhibitor trade, but the kill took so long to materialize, and then they lost Shen because in a world where they get the kill, he could either teleport down bottom to try and defend that one, pull out the response, but that's just not what ended up happening. Archie outplayed. Lost the maximum many ways there. Immortals yeah. getting actual control onto Baron to make a similar play again. Looks almost impossible. Archie's in the base. Going to keep pulling for a bit more on this one, but it's really going to join in on the fray. The question is how much does this pressure matter against the top lane priority towards Baron right now? It's an easy walk away. And the best thing here is Archie's like, well, Smite's not around, so whatever you want to contest, if he's drawing specifically x Smithy to the bot side, the playmaking, the Smite are all denied. So having running him specifically around the map is yep. just fine for the Urban. Yeah, and I'm waiting for Immortals to try and send Rise down there to stop Archie because I believe Rise in the Shen could win and then still try and prevent the Baron threat. But the longer they wait for that play, the higher the threat becomes to go for Archie because the faster Marines will be able to kill Baron with more items. And damage calculation is something that's second nature to casters, to players. We know how much damage people take and people do. When it's Urgot, a champion, you see a lot less. That timing can be off, and the timing needs to be on because it's not teleport from Rise. It's just going to have to be the Realm War. So if they take too long, the Baron damage is huge from Gigabyte Marine. And it's going to be Immortal starting it. In the face of a ward. Oh, 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 oh. He's almost going to die. He gets the shield at the last second, but he's still so low on HP. He gotta get away from this one. Even before the ultimate comes through, he's already out of the fight. Levi just has to get in range. He's gotta deal damage, then land the ulti. He lands a skill shot in the first place. Go to his probably just dead anyway. Explosive cast does not bring Optimus where Immortals wanted him. Now finally some life steal as Cody Sun gets a bit of health back. We see Urgot pushing in the face of Shen, basically saying, you can't leave. I will take the inhibitor for free. Loses most of his health bar. Cannot ult onto the Cogmore. Critical moment now for Immortals. And this is what Immortals is trying to pull off the Rise play bottom lane, but they're actually should be There's the stun, there's the burst. This could be the kill to expend the damage, but not quite there. No ulti. Gonna do enough damage now, and now Ola gonna force to run away. Gets smited, slowed down by Levi. Not gonna land the W, slow, but still on the chase. Ulti to buy a little bit more distance. He's gonna have the auto attack. Pomoser gonna go for the kill. Can't quite get him just yet. Finally, actually just running away and dying. You're right, so Flame. Not getting anything two for zero now. Gigabyte Marines on an almost uncontestable Baron. He may not be the best team fighter, but 1v2, he can do dirty things. Takes down the rise. This Baron's free. Well, Smithy has Smite. He's done it so well in North America, but he's getting shot down by Ash. The flash to chase down. No way. It says no way for you. And the Baron goes down, picked up. Now Cody's son, but he's up against oh! Barrier. Only picks up one kill. Can he trade with no way? Too Got much surprise, says steal. no. Too, too much life steal. And that sequence of events is how Marines get you sometimes, because the fact that Immortals then sent Pobelter down bottom, couldn't even deal with Archie then, and then having the play fall apart on the other side, and almost as a desperation, X Smithy tries to steal when he had no business, is just adding more fuel to the fire, making this lead potentially insurmountable. I mean, this fire is a blaze, chat. There's no other word to say about it. Once again, they're gonna turn off the Urgot. It's three bad guys this time. Well, the old flash is just back up right now. If they get someone to a quarter HP, Archie gets the kill with his ultimate. The chase is in. Stun's gonna land in a poke altar. That could be dangerous. Oh, they get away though, and no. Just the flash, the arrow down. Marines still still with that Baron. Just not enough damage to take down Archie, who just completed a War Mog's armor. Such a big sequence of events there. And as casters, we almost want to take a breath here. It's like, wow, let's reset the game. But if you're looking at Immortals, you don't have time to reset the game. Marines is already making the next play. They have Baron minions in the bottom lane. They have a minion wave up top while no way is catching the wave mid lane. So they're just going to keep setting up this Urgot play. And the minion waves have been pushed for the last 15 minutes. And it's exactly what the draft told us. Lane priority was everywhere. Big mm -hmm. Marines, Smithy lost. Tempo in the early game was on the back foot as well. But this time, Gigabyte Marines have profited the maximum from it. I love seeing the proactive team carry through leads. Now, they haven't won the game yet. We already had 1907 Fenerbahce get so sure. close against Samsung. But so far, they've shown that if you play with Tempo, you can actually get a big lead. It's going to take a lot for Immortals to get back into this game right now. Third Drake in a row picked up by Marines. Mountain adds to the elemental suite here for them.
as another turret had fallen to Archie, splitting in the top side. Yeah, and it's important to note that Immortals is so far behind the item curves right now. There's an Infinity Edge as well as crit and attack speed onto Noe, who has the Lulu powering him, him up. Much like in the way Marines beat Fnatic. Yes, it was crazy in the early game, but by late game, it was a fed Triss Lulu, right? And here, they have a fed Ash Lulu plus the CC from Syndra. So they're gonna keep split pushing, but the things that they are strong, the places where they have the gold, are very effective at using it. He's going to keep going into this one flame, going for some magic just himself. He's going to stop scaling against that Archie Urgot here. Look at that poke on from the Smithy, who got magic with his, sorry, armor himself and is so weak to the Syndra. Bot lane push coming through. Levi and Co. going to knock that one down. First inhibitor falls 28 30 into the game. Back in the mid lane, Noah getting the attack to the turret. No one's threatening him. That turret's down to about one quarter now. Levi gets away with some wards and looks at the next play. Just to be a fly in around the particular immortal place to know when they're going to actually pull the trigger. When are they actually going to say, we've given up enough, we need to fight now. We still haven't seen it, and they've lost most of their base. We're talking about when, we also have to talk about how, because they can't kill Archie with more than three people, with less than two people. Sorry, less than three, when they've tried to, it hasn't yep. worked. Oh, and knock up on the Syndra, the damage up, but almost there. The stun's going to land, Cody stun cleanses. Black and Daisy just still gets away with it, a heal from Ole. Now there's going to be the reset fight. Redemption putting off to his back to basically full health, and all that engage means nothing now as Gigabyte Marines look for the next play. Polter at half HP. Stun's going to land. This could be a kill to Smith Redemption by a few more seconds. The only going to keep him alive just a barely little bit, but Archie knocks on the top lane turret. But the trade comes down into the mid lane. They're going to chase on it. This one Cody's on flashing away. They might get the kill to Levi. He's going to pop in for a bit more time, though, and jump right back out. He will stay alive. No snipes going to be coming through, and the fear beyond death knocks down flames. He snuffs them out like a candle. And this is going to be all the inhibitors falling shortly. His top lane going to drop as well. Bot lane's already gone. And it's now just the base remaining 5v4. Yeah, it's a three and hit cycle with no flame, and Marines doesn't seem like they're letting up. Bonus M comes in, but they don't have the follow-up damage, not just yet. Anyway, looking for a couple of shots onto Lulu, but unlike as Venezer has flash this time around, walks away cleanly and Immortals. Just gonna have to farm super minions now is Gigabyte Marines gonna leave the base. A lot of the champions Immortals have chosen in this game have been staples of the metagame in the group stage of Worlds. But together, against a team willing to play proactive, just like you said, Jack, what does an initiation look like? What is the right use of a Shen ultimate? It's being used to save low health members, not playmate like Impact was praised for. We're gonna see the replay here. They look helpless here, and you see how the ultimate is used. They get no value out of Shen. Yeah, and even when they were in the mid lane, Urgot was taking the turret over on the top side, so Gigabyte Marines is actually playing this fight as patiently as they can, just trying to poke people down low so that Urgot can execute with his ultimate. They pull it off. There's order in the chaos of the Gigabyte Marines when they look best. Are the picks unconventional? Yes. Sure. They have many different titles thrown at them, but when they actually do plays like that, that on the first look, you're like, it's just craziness. The ordered chaos is allowing them to trade up every time. There is not free kills outside of the one donated to Pobelta by Levi much earlier in the game. I gotta say, it's beautiful to watch a team like Gigabyte Marines. I don't think you can call a game like this cheese. It's looking at the metagame saying, I know what you want to play. We've got our own style for this one. Now look at the play in the mid lane. See ya. Slow down. Explosive cast. He's gonna find the target. That's a kill picked up. Set up by Xmithy, and the kill gonna go over to Cody's son. Does need that money going towards uh, the next item, but look at the base. Those are knocked down by Archie. Now it's a 5v4 in the map. There's not much left that really Marines can push. They gotta look for this in the top side. But how fast can they kill Archie versus how fast can the rest of the Marines collapse on Immortals? Here they come. And you're seeing them split up now. Both are gonna run away. Here comes the oh, back line. He's in already, son. He gets the shield. He gets the heal. He's gonna stay alive. They're not gonna knock him down. They get rid of the Guardian Angel, but the turrets are base. dead for the Nexus. This could be just a base rush now. They knock down X50. They get one trade kill back into Levi. 4v3 on the They're map. They're on the way. Kills. Both are gonna get knocked down. A double kill and hell on the kill. Oh, Urga. The minions are there. Urga cannot die. He will not be stopped. And this will be Gigabyte Marines improving two and two. They tie the head to head. And this is the game that had to happen. If Marines want to make top eight, they've done step one. They just made the day so much more interesting. This keeps pretty much every group possibility alive. The casting group woke up early in the morning, had breakfast and said, this group might be settled after two games. Gigabyte Marines were not at that meeting. They had their own thoughts. It blows the group wide open. And now the Marines have beaten two out of three in the group. And it means that this group will, might go down to the wire. And it proves that you can never count Marines out. When you're talking about Immortals and how they could just easily be 
out of the group. You have to beat the Marines, and that should never have been an afterthought. This is a team that came to play. Three of the picks they picked in this game haven't been picked by anyone else in the group stage. Playing against Marines is like playing against no other team. Now, the only caveat we can give, because this should be a time to celebrate the Marines, it was game one after they had a lot of time to prep. You will have to wait and see in their back two games, was this everything? Do they have more? Because this strategy, I imagine, will be target banned by their next opponent. You don't need to give up everything. Maybe just the yeah. cane, because the power farming meant a lot. But we also have to remember that even if you have time to react to them, it's on the day. Previously, yeah. you got to see what they were pulling out, and you have a night to drill lane swaps. But now, if you're Fnatic, and you're playing them again, do you say, we should talk about Urgot, or do you talk about playing Immortals or playing Longju? Because those are games they have to prep beforehand. Sure. The time you have to react is so much different with today's slate of games. What's interesting as well is this actually helps Fnatic quite a bit. You talk about what they're going to do. They need to beat both those teams to stay alive. This is a good sigh of relief for the EUL CS squad. That three-way tie at two and four, totally a possibility. Yeah. Gonna be fun to watch for. And now for some more insight on that game, let's send it down to Dash and the analysts. Thank you very much, Freak. It's anyone's game now as the Gigabyte Marines take down Immortals. And gentlemen, Urgot, ready, go. <laughs> this game was sick, but not just Urgot, though. The entire draft from the Marines, I love what they do every single time, always prioritizing utility. With the Ash, with the Lulu, the Cinder, you've got everything you need. Then you throw in the Cane, the power farming from Levi, but the Urgot... I actually think there is a lot of surprise factor for this because there is no way anybody prepped against Urgot that you scrimmed against Urgot. You just have no idea what he does, so you die to him. I also think, actually, there's some synergies within the composition that make some sense. Yeah. You think a fast Shadow Evolve for the Kane can help burst someone down so Urgot can get an execution. With Syndra as well, you can upfront a lot of the damage with the Ash Alt, with a lot of these combos. It didn't really come into play, but it seems like there was a lot of thought put into it. Yeah, and uh, with the Urgot as well, like, surprise factor probably being the main thing here to benefit a Geek by Marines, because Immortals had multiple times where they, like, thought they were just about to kill him, or they could maybe 2v1 him, and it actually backfired a little bit. Ideally, though, there would be better top lane picks. Like, Trundle would have been great here, <laughs> as an example, because Urgot against Shen I don't know. Is Urgot, 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 Urgot the you. I, I know it's about win-losses. <laughs> that's the only thing that counts, well, but... There, there is a lot to be said for not uh, practicing a lot against the champion. That's a lot what times, I mean. Right? That's the surprise factor. That's why it was good. Yeah. Not necessarily the champion should be picked every time exactly, against Shen here. Exactly. But, I mean, I think if this is a Trundle, I think you see less mistakes, perhaps, from exactly. Immortals playing against it because they understand the damage profile of the champion. Now, outside yeah. of the novelty of the Urgot pick, I actually love this point about utility, right? We talk about for teams, uh, you know, in the face of these late-game compositions, a Shen, a Rise, a Kog'Ma with the Janna behind it, how do you get out in front? You need ways to start fights. On top of that, Gigabyte Marines specifically, what do we say about them all the time? Their star player is Levi. Yep. Let this guy carry games. Well, if he's going to move on to something like a damage-oriented cane, you got to be able to start fights elsewhere. And this is the first skirmish we saw. This is a 2v3, or out of the 3v3 out of the Marines, because Urgot gets deleted right away. But notice what happens here between Immortals' decision-making. And Levi chooses to zone out Pobelter because he's the main damage threat here. But Immortals has to recognize, you're only going to kill one. They have to turn back on Levi. They greed out, and they end up getting the worst of it. Exactly, and I think this was actually the, the uh, one of a number of missed decisions here from Smithy throughout the game, but Levi was extremely proactive. He knew that he had to actually snowball this game. Another kind of question here is, where's the Shenel, right? You know, right. Pobelter flashing away. If the Shenel comes in, maybe they can turn that around, but a lot of messed up execution from Immortals, and Levi took advantage of that. Yeah, and I feel like Gigabyte Marines, outside of like Levi's very first tower dive, he did like level three where, where it backfired, Actually, just played also really smart yeah. around the 1-3-1 one, one split push uh, where with Levi constantly roaming in the jungle. It wasn't just blind aggression and right. complete fiesta or anything. No, it was actually they knew exactly when they could go all in, especially with the Syndra and the uh, Kane combination. And it goes deeper than that. Look at the level one. The Gigamite Marines had a three-man invade onto Raptors. You put Xmithy behind from the get-go. You have Levi starting solo jungling, so he gets ahead of the Gragas. And when you consider the champions that you have in the jungle right now, your physical damage threats, you've got Ezreal, Rek'Sai, and Jarvan. None of them really have a lot of kill pressure, whereas you have Kane. Kane, Syndra combined can burst through a Ryze that has Stand United and Heal. And when he's already snowballed, when the team's decision is to snowball, it goes even further. And to top things off, you have a winning bottom lane that Cody's son just got rocked. Let's be honest. When you take Ash, he has to take Cleanse. They lost first break. Yeah, they did. But while we're giving a lot of credit, er, Praise to Levi. I have to give some criticism to Smithy because I do think that 
a lot of why this game went so bad is kind of on his shoulders. We talked about that skirmish where I think, you know, not peeling off to, to actually target the same person with Pobelter. The top lane dive where him and Flame both step back with one auto left on the Urgot. That should have been a sure kill. Then another time, they go up top lane trying to pick on the Urgot again, and Smithy holds on to his ultimate until Flame is already in ultimate range from the Urgot and he gets executed. I think that if you use the, the Gragas ultimate at the very start of that, that's a free kill. There's a lot of missed execution here and some of it comes from not having practice, but some of it is just straight up, you know, not good enough play. And I think that uh, really Immortals got straight up at beat. A little bit of greed with the spells there in terms of uh, wanting to get more for less. It bites Immortals in the end. I think what makes, or what is most interesting rather about this result is what it does for the groups. As is seen here, we now have Gigabyte Marines and Immortals tied. Most importantly, what this means is that Fnatic does not need to win out anymore in order to have a shot at getting out of the groups. Yeah, they have to beat Immortals and Gigabyte Marines specifically. They don't need to beat Longshore, which of course is, I guess, a relief for these guys sitting backstage. Longshore needs to, of course, go 6-0 as well. <laughs> and then you have that two, uh, two wins, four losses, three-way tie where any team can make it out. The fact of the matter is, though, if Fnatic now could get a win off Longshore, that means so Let's much. Let's calm down here. Let's calm down. <laughs> Let's group. calm down. Hey, we heard Sneaky top of the day. They're kicking the overdrive, Martin. I mean, it would, oh. be, it would be big. And then on the flip side, right, for Immortals, now it's time to get, you know, nose to the grindstone. You just lost the game that you thought, you know, that you thought you're going to open the day with a win here. You got to go up against some, uh, a Fnatic, maybe a re-energized Fnatic, and then obviously the favorites in Long Zoo. Well, Fnatic, at least now when they play up against Immortals, they'll have a sigh of relief, not just because, as you mentioned, yeah. they don't have to beat Longju, but this Immortal squad didn't leave much for excitement. You're like, well, the decision-making was off. They played poorly with Xmithy, who is the main shot caller who's so critical for this team. And so when they look to, as Sneaky said, turn everything around, they actually have a good shot now to be competitive in this group, which is not something that any of us thought would happen. I just think it completely changes the mentality of Fnatic, you know, going into the rest of this day. You know, coming in 3 you'd be thinking, oh, the chances are very grim. You have to beat Longju to have a chance. That's probably not going to happen. But now it's up in the air. It's anyone's group. Gigabyte is going to be re-energized. Fnatic is going to be re-energized. And really, it's a, it's a three-horse race for that second place. I mean, it is. I think good thing, though, for Immortals is, and, and Gigabyte Marines, is I think Fnatic have looked weaker than Gigabyte okay. Marines. So despite Immortals, you know, losing this game, it's not necessarily painting a picture of them just being the weakest team. Right. By any means, I still think they will be favorites with the Marines to make it out in second place, and Fnatic will have to be, you know, the dark horse. That's good for my pickums if it turns out that way. Now, the Gigabyte Marines took a crucial win against Immortals. When we return, we'll see if Fnatic can shake things up when they go against undefeated Longzu. Don't touch that browser. Did you get all your notes? Smithy in the fog lands. The body slap. No turret. No, there is turret. Dagger takes one shot. Gonna jump to the wall, but there's the damage output. And they're gonna get first blood. Who got out? Who got out? Should I know? They might have the first damage of the fear beyond death. Not quite gonna come through. It's Edo, it is. It's gonna eat him. Nobody's gonna get the kill. He's gonna get the no way, says no way for you. The Baron goes down, picked up. Now Cody's son, but he's up against Barrier. Oh. Only picks up one kill. Can he trade with no way? And the hell of a kill on Urga. The minions are there. Urga cannot die. He will not be stopped. And this will be Gigabyte Marines improving two and two. They tied the head to head. And this is the game that had to happen. If Marines want to make top eight, they've done step one.